So hi, welcome to AI Inform, Bio-Inspired Solar Designs and Architecture. Um, today is the first day, so today we will be giving you a series of four uh, very, very short talks, each range ranging from 20 to 30 minutes. And the goal is to introduce the four core idea of this workshop. So the first is solar design, second is bio-inspired form finding, third one is uh, cellular automata and aggregation, and then the last one is artificial intelligence and human machine interaction. So this workshop is about the technical capacity of these ideas as much as their histories and theories, their social economic values, and the possibilities of synthesizing them. So the talks are very important in that we will try to introduce how we think these ideas can come together in a combinatorial pipeline, but more importantly, we wish to raise questions around them, including the automation of design, the integration of different forms of intelligence, and so on. So we will have a more interactive format and have discussions with you to reflect on the pipeline together. So the pipeline is not a definite solution, but as a starting point to raise more questions. After the talk, we will have a Q&A section and a comfort break. And in the second half of the day, we will have an exercise together to shape your own design brief and kickstart your projects. So let's start with introducing AI Inform. The goal of our workshop is to extend beyond the technical exploration to a systematic formulation of these four core ideas. In other words, we, we are aiming at an exploration to the future of design, where we as designers are constantly challenged by the constant change in context by layers of incoming data from different sources, from human machine to artificial natural. So let's start with human machine, which makes our main title AI Inform. So AI Inform explores artificial intelligence informed design flows with a focus on solar designs, where form finding is not taken simply as an optimal resultant shape, but information that informs energy circulation. So such form information comprehends beyond a single unit to the aggregation of units that operates in a straight relationship with an environment and available energy, facilitated by information and energy feedback. The design process to which is also enabled by circular feedback between human and machine intelligence. So it's AI informed, informed by information. That was a joke anyway. So we wish to develop a critical understanding towards how human and machines can interact in developing diverse combinatorial pipeline through the exchange of information. So it is not just AI generating some forms or generating some images, but how different intelligence inform design from designer intuition to algorithmic generation and how information is being used within design as sets of iterative decision-making processes. This means that we're not only interested in, one, in what the digital tools make available, but what these intelligence are modeling behind from natural to artificial processes. So we define AI as both rule-based or agent-based systems and machine learning systems, both of which we will experiment with in this workshop. The former involves the design of models within set of rules where we will study specifically cellular automata and evolutionary algorithm. The latter achieve intelligence with machines that define their own rules based on available data, where we will study specifically picks to picks and AI image processing technique. So more specifically, we do not wish to take picks to picks as a mere form of playing with some images, but how we can extract information from it that guides our design strategies and translating between 2D to 3D information from pixel to voxel. Most importantly, take a critical evaluation of why we need to use machine learning within design. What it is that um, the machine learning is automating and how does it impact us like design intelligence where creativity is transcended from causation to correlations from small to big data. So this shows a means by which designers can describe and capture how the immaterial of information may be manifested in physical forms and vice versa. So such kind of probabilistic approach implies a measure of the amount of possible arrangement within a certain system. So this is an important question to ask. For instance, when we are running an evolutionary algorithm, we can leave it to go through 10 iterations or 100 iterations or 1,000 iterations or even 10,000 or more. So when do we as designer know when to stop the algorithm? So that's a problem of entropy. 
in an ever mounting terabytes of data, our computational capacity is always limited. So we're always challenged by such kind of limitation. So for instance, the other day, Alberto were running a thousand iterations on his computer and he used 107 gigabyte. So that is just um, in realistic for every situation, a design situation that we have to face. So entropy, this problem of entropy is a notion immensely important to us, not only because of its ability in evaluating and organizing information, but also it ties information to energy to organize within a straight available set of energy. So entropy ties the reading of the amount of disorganization in some information with the amount of energy that is unavailable to do useful work. So this brings us to the social economic background of this workshop, which is solar design. Here we shall explore together the more profound significance of entropy from a system perspective to understand how we may utilize it within our design pipeline. So this is some familiar images of renewable energy systems. Um, planners often go out of the city for planting solar farms. This contributes to a loss of solar energy in cities from direct and indirect sources. For instance, reflection from buildings and reflective services, corners and used, large open spaces at public areas like universities. Um, the challenge is to make solar energy attractive for diverse building component topologies. For instance, we can use handrails on balconies, we can have solar cells embedded on roof tiles and et cetera. So instead of having to transport solar energy from very far locations, sometimes provoking direct energy competition model within our, uh, with our greenery, for instance, you can see that in the planting of the solar farm, most of the green areas are removed. So that's just um, funny. So we are thinking that photovoltaic arrangements with more organic design can help to embed solar devices in urban structure. For instance, you can charge your phone directly from light harvested on a plaza bench, et cetera where we can localize energy generation and consumption. So how is it made available? Besides de uh, design, the recent material advancement, including thin film technologies, carbon-based and smart materials, for instance, self-cleaning nanostructures, electrochromatic uh, solar cells are flexible and lightweight, customizable and economic via techniques like spin coating, they are also very efficient under low or diffuse lighting and low voltage conditions. So meaning that we can put solar cells even indoors. So they're not just existing on the rooftop, but really diverse topology. Um, in particular, carbon-based materials enable us to parallel biomimicking and generative designs with energy exchange mechanisms of organisms. So basically, uh, we're moving from the era of pure silicon to an integration between silicon and carbon. So that's where research that looks deeper into biological light harvesting systems. So how can we harvest light as efficient as our nature? This implies that we as designers, we have to master the ability to comprehend across scales from nano micro of materials to intermediate scale of solar products and buildings to micro scale of the aggregation of building systems into urban structure. So one of our goals, the most important one in holding this workshop is to diversify the available solar options. Just as you can see um, that for instance, in a forest or in a coral reef, each plant develop its own solution to harness power. So, we're imagining that in the future, use, users should also be able to match make between their social economic needs and different designs according to various parameters of social and environmental, including different light intensities and stuff like that. So meaning that we will have to have hybrid solutions across scales. This actually have a more profound implication in a society because if we're saying every user can generate its own topology with a with different design, meaning that we're decentralizing energy, not only in energy consumption, but also in energy production, not anymore entirely relying on large scale power plants, but embedding the ability to generate electricity across urban fabrics, where a systematic measure of the organization between all these elements uh, that forms a distributed network is crucial. So such kind of measurement is exactly an entropy measure. For instance, this is something that's happening in Hong Kong right now. In recent years, they launched um, a new program, which is called Fit in Tariff. 
Um, basically, its goal is to explore the modest urban renewable energy capacity, where the program incentivizes low-rise private housing to install solar panels on their rooftops and sell, uh, sell electricity back to power companies. So even though it is still a more centralized control over how electricity circulates within a city, but if the scheme is successful, it can help to build up local infrastructural capacity in the energy market. So the design of the form finding is not merely just the form itself, but also how it can enable individual users. So if we go back to the notion of entropy, it is increasingly significant in the rise of distribution and decentralization. For any distributed solar system to answer problems in our energy crisis, it must be able to minimize information and energy entropy internal to the system meaning to minimize disorganization in information and energy dissipation. So that is something that we see opportunity within machine learning and other algorithmic generation um, beyond its generative capacity, but also its discriminative capacity in understanding data. So these challenge includes energy and energy trading and exchange within the network, power grid integration, standardizing protocol, and many more. To give you a more solid concept of how significant this problem is. The recent Texas power shutdown due to a snowstorm is a great example. So you can see from the bottom, uh, the R cult is basically the Texas power grid. This is called a standalone power grid, meaning it's disconnected to the rest of the United States. So as you can see in the light blue, uh, blue area, but unlike centralized systems in Hong Kong, they have a distributed energy market, meaning that private Companies generate and sell electricity to users where they have to compete in pricing. So the whole goal of enabling an energy market is that if private entities compete, then uh, general citizens, they can enjoy a lower pricing because of market competition. But of course, in the face of crisis, such form of distributed network has a very vulnerable point which is basically because the pricing is often directly correlated to supply and demand. So for instance, when you have a snowstorm that caused a shortage in electricity in February last month, the power grid shut down, there's no external source of power because they have an independent grid, meaning that um, some of the household, they have to pay over a thousand US dollar for a day of electricity. So from this simple example, we can see what centralized and decentralized systems are good and bad at, and we can tell the importance of self-organization and aggregation within a distributed network, which is something that we will also introduce later in the workshop. So this is how we are trying to orientate machine learning as an automation within our design pipeline. And we wish to consider a few questions. First, is it possible to automate organization of energy components using available sensory data? So this is something to consider when we reflect together the possible deployment of combinatorial pipeline by the end of the workshop. So you see on the screen here, uh, the actual pipeline where we have split into different regions. The first one is to identify social economic context and then to know where you can actually gather solar data. The second one is how you can synthesize between mathematic models, bio-inspired and generative systems into delivering a preliminary form. And then both of which is gonna fit into the solar analysis, which we're gonna use um, evolutionary algorithm to optimize via collected solar data. And then we're gonna use machine learning to automate this progress because of heavy computation. So later, David is gonna introduce in more details how we're actually gonna position the pipeline. So, but before that, we must understand what kind of aggregation we're aiming at. For instance, if we have just one form, how do we manage to scale it up to a city scale? And most importantly, how can we translate the aggregation into an actual algorithm that we have some sort of design control over and how we can partner with the algorithms into optimizing these forms. So before I actually go into that, we will look at how biointelligence and social intelligence harvest light differently. Mm -hmm. So currently, social biological and social economic system, we harvest light very differently um, in terms of economies of scale. The former 
the social biological system scale through variations and adaptability, the social economic systems scale through mass production. So the marginal cost counting in units of capital of conventional photovoltaic design minimizes as its surface areas maximize, meaning you can see the more solar panels we uh, pave over a surface area, the lower the marginal cost and the higher the solar energy we can harvest. But such form of design and such form of calculation has not taken into consideration the larger the system, uh, the larger system to which the PV are embedded, which is nature, which is chaotic uh, in nature, where a singular solution to be used for every solar condition does not produce a low carbon economy of scale. Also, our method in maximizing surface area produce a large shading footprint, which contributes to direct energy competition model with its surrounding. For instance, you can see like really large areas of trees are removed for planting farms. And in a coral reef, every coral has a different topological solution for the same problem of maximizing surface area to harvest light. So all of these different local topology work together to distribute energy through diversity. And our job is to understand how they adapt to each other as designers. So if we are to synthesize designer and machine intelligence for bio-inspired form finding to embed sort of designs in our urban environment, we must be able to capture beyond their form, but also how forms enable the information and energy exchange process. And think about how each component can be embedded across scales. So this points to our last core idea, which is aggregation. The challenge in aggregation is that the more of the same component we put within a system, not only the good side enhance, but also the bad side enhance. For instance, if we put some conventional silicon solar cells together, we would expect that the more cell we put in, the larger the energy we can generate. But it is not always the case because we will have resistance in a network. So have you ever wondered why there are like white lines or spacing between the solar cells or PV devices? Anyone here have studied physics? Do you, do you know why there are white lines in the solar cells? Okay, I didn't know this before, before I started this research project, but basically these things are called bus bar. Um, in the fabrication of solar panel, there is a thin strap of copper or aluminum between the cells that conducts electricity. So that spacing is called bus bar. So it basically separates the solar cells uh, to conduct a direct current and then collect electricity to the solar inverter. Basically, it converts the direct current into usable alternating current. Well, of course, it's important to know this technical problem, but more importantly is how we can use this to our advantage as designers, right? The idea is that the more spacing or the more bus bar you add, the more electrons are able to pass through, so efficiency increase. But the problem is still there. How do we minimize energy dissipation during such kind of exchange processes? Meaning in aggregation, it is not only the units which matter, but their connection and exchange matters the same, if not more. Um, so this is uh, one of the designs that um, Baha have made inspired by corals, which he will go into more details later. One of the things that they do to adapt is basically called shading response responses, meaning that they have sensory components to backscattered infrared lights from one another, meaning if they sense that they're shaded from one another, they will perhaps automate themselves, they will move, they will have some sort of responses. So this is exactly the kind of adaptivity through information feedback between individuals. So how can we describe and capture using both mathematical and natural languages of not just complexity of the form, but also their mechanism of light harvesting and their intelligence? Basically our workshop emphasizes options over optimal solutions channeling this to diversify designs, which can be aggregated for diverse building topologies and user demand. Instead of generating one design to be used for every solar problem, this workshop will focus on artificial intelligence informed workflows that generate families of designs, which can be fabricated in similar methods using the same mathematical conception. 
So just a brief recap of our objectives, after which we will soon have a five minute break before we go into the next one so we can let things sink, uh, sink in. The first one is design framing and problem mapping. We realize that as designer, most of the time, it's not so important to prove our solution, but it's more important to prove our problem. So how do we actually identify a problem space that's worthy of intervention? So one of our exercises would be to identify and evaluate prospective strategies uh, in intervention for solar design. And then we have to prove why it's important to do it. Why don't we use, just use the conventional way of flat silicon sort of large panels? Why do we need to have diverse um, complex forms that might be harder to fabricate? What is the value in our design? So the second is about inspired form finding. Basically, we're researching the relationship between data and nature for form finding strategies. And we have to locate the relationship between light harvesting form and variation using facial algorithm and rule-based generative methods. The third one is aggregative decision-making. So basically it means that the creative design process is a constant iteration between forms and information, and we have to consistently evaluate it between design intuition and algorithm generation. For instance, a certain form that we arrive at might seem optimal at a local scale, but does it imply that it's still the same efficient at its global topology uh, within its adjacent environment? And why, how do we even arrive at such conclusion? The third one is, sorry, the fourth one is human machine interaction. Basically, we have to understand our future as an opportunity to be explored by human machine interaction. The product of design is at the same time, the pipeline. So we have to understand our task in terms of designing solar systems. What are the tasks? How can these tasks be distributed between designer and the algorithm? And how do we neg negotiate iteratively between these different intelligence? The, lar the last one is called information literacy. Basically is to raise awareness in the search, organize and communication of information in its varying format, especially for the system making and learning processes where information is consistently being presented and, and communicated between different humans and machines. A specific concern is between 2D and 3D data. So how can we translate between rule-based and machine learning system with these different data formats? It's proving the problem as much as we're proving solutions. So let's just briefly also go through a timetable so we all know that what we're gonna do every day. Schedule, day one. We are almost at the end of the first talk and then we'll have three more and then we're gonna have Q&A. And in the second half of, of the day, we will have an exercise that we map a context and data and then you'll have to submit your design brief. Tomorrow, we're going to have an amazing foreign finding technical workshop with Grasshopper with Baja. And then in the sec second half of the day, we will review and develop the design exercise. So you will have time for Q&A, for um, tutorials, individual tutorials and stuff. And then at the end, you will submit a draft of the form. On the third day, we will start fresh with a Q&A session where we troubleshoot some of the problems in your design pipeline. And then we will use um, Ladybug and WAPS in simulation. And also we will review the design at the end of the day. And you will have to submit, submit some images for machine learning training. On Thursday, it will be the day before the last day. So it will be the draft submission and review. And then David will bring us through a machine learning demo. And then we will go through a design push and develop presentation slides. And then the final day, it will be for final review. So we are at day one. This is basically the two thing that we have to do today is to find a context, find your mathematical inspiration and find your biological inspiration. Again, some people are interested in the uh, final outcome. So we are expecting that you will have a bio-inspired solar design in a 3D model. Um, you will export it in .glb format. You will have a simulation model with solar data and you will present some slides to explain your final design process and some high-res rendering images. Uh, you will also have to explain 
your own pipeline, like how you're troubleshooting the differences in data translation and stuff like that. And finally, the most exciting part is that we will organize for you a web VR exhibition. So all of your 3D objects is going to be in a virtual space where you can just like people can just come and look at your work. So very soon we will have a five minute comfort break. Um, before you go into the break, I just wish you to take in this question. We're going to have five minutes and then me and Baha will talk a little bit more on bio inspired form finding. Cool. Okay, I hope that wasn't too overwhelming. I hope I'm still seeing some smiley faces. <laughs> Five minutes and then we're gonna come back. Yeah? Yep. In a bit. Yes. Awesome. You will have the recording um, afterwards as I said.